Hello again, thanks for joining me this month. I'm going to be talking about powerful reputation in this video blog. Powerful reputation. Samuel in the Old Testament was a prophet, a powerful man. It's written about him that not one of his words fell to the ground. And when the first king, Saul, had been disobedient, God sent his prophet, the prophet of the whole nation. He was sent to anoint David as the new king. He took a horn of oil and went to Bethlehem. We read about this in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 4. And when the elders of the town saw him coming, they trembled and said, Have you come peaceably? Have we done something wrong? They were trembling with fear. Just imagine the scene. The prophet of the whole nation coming to town and meeting the town's leaders who shook with fear in the presence of the man of God. In our modern times, such things are very difficult to understand because we're now civilised people or so-called and we've lost the fear of the Lord. Samuel carried with him the presence of God. He spoke with divine authority. Very few people nowadays have such an effect on those around them. Jesus, the Messiah, was known as a teacher and a healer, a gentle person. Gentle, yes. But right from the beginning of his ministry, he showed his capacity to be severe, especially when it came to the honour of his father and his father's house, in other words, the temple. Remember at the time of Passover, he made a whip of cords. Deliberately and purposefully, he knotted the ropes together then he went in zealous, righteous anger and threw out the traders from the temple enclosure. Read that in John 1, 13 to 17. From that time, his disciples and the people who treated him before, maybe with less respect, changed their tack and they realised, don't mess with him. He has got a side of righteous anger. And they treated him with a lot more caution. He'd shown that he was gentle, but he was also able to be very severe. He demonstrated his zeal. He did miracles. He changed water into wine at Cana. And he also did many other miracles to demonstrate his power. For three years, he healed the sick, cleansed lepers, cast out demons, raised the dead, walked on water and multiplied loaves and fishes on more than one occasion. So this man, Jesus, was powerful. He certainly was known for his power. He had a powerful reputation. The Jewish leaders were really angry about this because they were the ones who thought they had power and they tried on several occasions to catch him and to kill him but each time he escaped i'll give you some references in nazareth luke 4 30 they tried to throw him off a cliff in jerusalem three references here john 7 30 8 59 and 10 39 have a look at those references. You'll see that the Jewish leaders tried to catch and kill Jesus. So with this kind of powerful reputation, obviously the Jewish leaders were overjoyed when Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot offered to betray him. Judas was mad. He was angry, jealous. You see that in uh, Matthew 26, 14 to 16. He made that decision to go and betray him and was paid a few pieces of silver for doing it. 
but he was angered at Mary's treatment of Jesus. Mary loved Jesus and she'd given him an extravagant gift of perfume, John 12, 3. And so Judas arranged the betrayal of Jesus and he took a huge crowd of religious leaders, temple police and Roman soldiers into the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives, John 18 and verse 3. Matthew describes this enormous band of people with the Greek word oklos, O-C-H-L-O-S, indicating it was a massive crowd, Matthew 26, 47. Mark and Luke use the same word, oklos, Mark 14, 43, Luke 22, 47. But why so many armed men with swords and clubs just to capture one unarmed man. Well, as I've just been describing, it was because of his powerful reputation. When he asked them who they were looking for, they said, Jesus of Nazareth, and he said, I am. And in just two words, I am, the whole group fell backwards. He had used the name of God, Exodus 3.14. You'll see that he used those two words, John 18.5. I am, a whole lot, down. Powerful reputation. The Apostle Paul taught the gospel of grace, Acts 20.24. In his great letter to the Romans, he said he was not ashamed of his gospel as it was the power of God working towards salvation. Romans 1, 16, the Amplified Bible. When he visited Corinth, he described how his preaching was not with clever words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. My dear friends and partners, somewhere, somehow, in the Christian church, this kind of power has been lost. Thank God that we are in the process of revival, restoring that power, drawing it out of our spirit that power is there in our spirit. We've already received raising from the dead, resurrection power because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Have a look at Romans 8 and verse 11 and Acts 1 and verse 8. Let's believe it. Believe we have that power. I'm baptised in the Holy Spirit. If you are, you have that power. Instead of begging God to send the power, let's believe that what he sent at Pentecost 2,000 years ago actually came and we've received it. Yes, let's act like those in the Acts of the Apostles and demonstrate that God is powerful even in us, just human vessels of dust and clay. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. So many Christians are just nice people who wouldn't harm a fly. But we are called to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3. We need to build up confidence in the one who lives inside us, Christ the Son of God. This is a mystery. Colossians 1, 27. Christ is in us. We need to develop that attitude, to believe it, and then we too will develop a reputation of power. The devil needs to know our name and think twice about attacking us. Meditate on this powerful message this month. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.